Okay, this is going to be a video tutorial about inner VLAN routing and also why we need VLANs. So, first of all, we need routing when we have more than one network. So, in this scenario right here, we've got a router and we have two networks. There's the network on the left and the network on the right. And each network is attached to the router on an interface, right? And let's say we need two networks uh, in this organization because we have students and faculty that we want to put on one network and we want them to be separate right from the administration and the staff which we want to have on a separate network right so that makes sense we have two networks and we have one on one side and one on the other and in this scenario though we have no VLANs so if you're students and faculty you're gonna to need to connect to this switch which is then going to connect to the router and this is all the one student and faculty network right now of course we could add additional switches here and add additional computers but essentially this is going to all be students and faculty and then over here on this switch also there's no VLANs on this switch so if you're on the 20 network over here your administration and staff and you need to connect to this switch and if we need more room we could add more switches to connect to switch to switch to switch add more hosts but essentially you're going to need to connect basically to um, this switch right in this scenario here which then connects to this router and then goes to the internet okay so this is a scenario that has multiple networks it needs routing between the networks because we actually want them to be able to communicate in sometimes across right so um, but this is a scenario where you have no VLANs right okay so let's look at another scenario so in the scenario down here though right now let's pretend that we have let's say a um, a five-story building okay so floor one two three four and five we've got a five-story building right and now we have VLANs so now what we've decided to do is put the students and faculty on VLAN 10 right for the 10 network and we've been put administration and staff on VLAN 20 but now since we can VLAN the switches right we can have either network right either the 10 right either the 10 the pink VLAN 10 for the students and faculty or VLAN 20 the 20 network right both can attach to the same switch right so now you know if we want to put a uh, let's say a, a faculty office on the fifth floor but we need to have a faculty office on the first floor because this faculty member is afraid of heights then um, they can do it and attach to this switch because it's VLAN off so this is a scenario why, where, where VLANs help out. Now, to make this work, though, we can no longer have these switches attaching to a router in the center because this, the router has two interfaces for two networks, and we want the 10 network and the 20 network to exist on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that router in the center here, right? And we're going to replace it with, in this model, a switch right so there we go so now you have a switch and then in between the switches um, we put trunks so we'll say okay port one let's say to port one and then crossover cable here say port one and in this case it's gonna have to go to the next available port let's say port two so then um, so now we have um, we have switch to switch to switch and now what we'll do is we'll put our router at the bottom generic router let's say at the bottom there we go and we'll attach a straight through cable from the routers let's say fast ethernet zero to this switch interface we'll go to interface interface five and we can turn on that port just to make it look good. All right, so now it's on. So now we have all of these switches basically going to this router, right? And we have all of these networks. And so we have essentially in this scenario what we'd call a router on a stick, or basically all of everything, all of these networks attached to the router on one interface. And in reality, what we'd probably need to do is this router would then attach to an internet service provider device which we could just say is is like another router here or some DCE device right 
and then this would connect to this and we'll use let's say a serial connection for that and we'll say serial 2 to serial 2 so there's our serial connection to the ISP and then the ISP would let's say go to the internet right and we'll just we'll do that let's see what devices we can attach to here serial alright that's fine and we'll say okay so there we go so there is our network attached to our router and then attached to an ISP which is then attached to the internet so here's our network in the building and here's our router on a stick because all of these networks attach to the router on one interface so this would be a scenario which would be a lot more flexible because now we can have the benefit of multiple networks right but we can attach these hosts on these multiple networks to any of these switches on any of these floors and we have greater f um, flexibility uh, in the physical location also and the logical location so how do you route between two separate VLANs or which is two separate networks across a switch right switch to switch to switch and then switch to router just over one interface how do you route to two separate VLANs or two networks across one interface okay well if we go down here we can see that I've turned it upside down a little bit and there's two ways to do this right so in this scenario what I've got is I've got let's say VLAN 10 VLAN 20 and VLAN 30 and this guy's 192.168.10.100 and 20.100 and 30.100 right and so one way to do it is to set up the VLANs on the switch ports and then have each VLAN, a port for each VLAN, going to a router, and your router is going to need to have three interfaces, right? So FA01, 02, and 03, so you're going to need a router with three Ethernet interfaces, and then you'd assign the router the IP address, let's say 10.1, 20.1, and 30.1. So now 10.1, right, on the yellow VLAN can communicate to 10.1 interface on the router, and he can reach his gateway. So this would be kind of a traditional model. The problem with this model is you need a router that now has three Ethernet interfaces and now you've got to use up three interfaces on your switch wasting basically interfaces. Or you could use this model which is a little bit like this model just turned upside down you know one router to a switch and that is a it's the router on a stick model. So now the router is on a stick so and the stick is a trunk and it's going to the switch and so you've got the three VLANs just like over here right you've got VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 right but now all three VLANs are going across the trunk port to the router and instead of having three interfaces on the router all you have is sub interfaces so you can see here I put FA00.10 so that's sub interface 10 and FA00 sub interface 20 and FA 0, 0 sub interface 30 and on each one of these sub interfaces you can have um, an IP address so he can be 10.1 20.1 and 30.1 all on the same interface now this idea of sub interfaces you can actually even do this on your own computer um, a lot of people don't realize that you can create sub interfaces just on your own NIC, your Ethernet port, right on your own computer. So, for instance, if I open up, let's say, my network connections, right? So here's control panel, network and internet, network connections, right? And I go to my Ethernet NIC, right? And I have it unplugged right now. And also, you can see that if I was to go in here, and I could just go to TCP IP version 4 and go to properties right and you can see I'm set for DHCP and all this but what if right what if we did like this right we say like that and then we clicked advanced right and then you realize that now right so I said I'm gonna manually configure my IP address right and 
So I can put in manual IP address settings and I clicked advanced and you can see that I could actually add multiple IP addresses to my NIC, right? So I could have address 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever and have sub interfaces right on the NIC, right on my own computer, right? And a lot of people don't really realize that you could do this, that you could have sub interfaces on the NIC right on your computer, right? It's just not something that they ever realize. So anyway, I'll reset this, close this out. So that's what's basically just happening here is that you're setting sub interfaces on your router so that it can have three IP addresses instead of just one, right? And then you've got the trunk going across to the switch which carries traffic from all three VLANs. So let's configure this up really quickly right here.